Good morning. Welcome to our virtual worship here at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church of Brownsville. God bless you. God bless you. Thank God for you joining us today. Amen. On another virtual worship service today. I'm so excited. Amen. To have you with us today. Amen. Reverend Carlos Jackson is back off a little break. Amen. He's coming to bring forth. Amen. The prayer for us this morning. Amen. The choir is going to bring us song service. And then, amen, we're going into the word together. Looking forward to sharing this word with you today. Good morning, Annie. Y'all. First friend of the month, we thank you for being with us this morning in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you with thanksgiving on our tongue. We thank you, Father, for watching over us all night long and not caused any harm, any danger to come upon us. You've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Oh, God, take us by the betrayal of our minds and our emotions and our will, Lord, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Have mercy right now, Lord. Tristen us upon every leaning side. Fix every situation in our life, Lord. Oh, the roads are rough and the hills are high. Oh, God, have mercy. Have mercy on our families. Have mercy upon our sick ones. Have mercy upon our children, Lord. Have mercy upon all the people in the world. Mercy shoot their case right now in the name of Jesus. Fix it, Lord. Fix it, Jesus. We know you can and we know you will. Our minds are all messed up right now. We are very confused. So much chaos going on around us. Have mercy right now. Oh, Lord, people are killing people every day for no reason that we don't understand. Have mercy right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, I'm going through the valleys of the shadows of death. I know that you got me. And I'm walking with faith that you're going to bring me through this all right. Have mercy right now, Lord. Thank you in the name of Jesus. The earth is the Lord and the fullness of, and they that dwell therein. Oh, we only have a whole lot of love, peace, joy, and happiness in our life. Give it to us, Lord. Give it to us right now. Let us open up our mind. I plead the blood of Jesus on every member of Antioch. I plead blood of Jesus on the entire world. Oh, God, sometimes we don't understand the situations that we are in, but we know that you're going to get us through it because we're going to praise your holy name. He said that when praises goes up, blessings come down. Thank you for your blessings all down through the year. Thank you for everything that you're doing right now. Thank you, God, because we come from a long ways. We've either got a long ways to go. In the name of Jesus, I pray for all the sick, shut in, and the bereaved families. Strengthen them, fathers, in their endeavor. Strengthen them right now, Lord, that they may be able to go through it. Oh, Lord, sometimes you don't understand. Sometimes we don't understand, but you got all understanding. We are asking you right now for understanding. Give us some understanding. Give us some peace. Fill us with your Holy Ghost so that we can shout and tell people how you love us. You died on Calvary for our sins. Thank you for dying on Calvary for our sins. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins right now. Help us, Father. We're begging. We're asking. Help us right now. Help us in Antioch. Help us on 46th Street. Help us in the United States of America. Get the, together, Lord. Get us together. Put us with low love, low peace, more happiness, more joy. That we may be able to treat one another like human beings. We praise your holy name. In the master's name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. How many of you know that the Lord is great and mighty? Amen. I know I'm not the only one here, but I know that the Lord is great and mighty. Amen. Amen. And I know that he's there. He's everywhere. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. God is good all the time. Yes, he is. Help me out, sisters. Amen. Is our God. 
you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Revelations chapter 3. Revelations chapter 3. I want to begin uh, with verse number 1, reading all the way down to verse number 6. Revelations chapter 3. Amen. Verse number 1 through verse number 6. It says, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful. And strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found the, thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, now how thou hast received and heard. And hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know. What hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before, the angel, before his angels. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, once again, we, we're right here in Revelations. This is, amen, the fifth letter uh, among the seven letters that Christ dictated to John uh, the Apostle on the island of Patmos as John was in exile amen the spirit of the Lord came to him and Jesus amen dictated these letters and these letters represents perhaps amen certainly uh, seven issues or the several issues that were going on in seven churches in Asia Minor at this time. But those seven issues are also, my brothers and sisters, issues that currently are going on in the churches of our time. These are the obstacles, these are the problems, amen, that each church at one time or another in their history encounter amen and my brothers and my sisters this church at the city of sardis amen was different than the church at 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 Ephesus, different than the church amen at at smyrna different than the church at pergamos different than the church at thyatira this church jesus when he dictates his letter to john has nothing good to say. He has nothing good to say about them. He, he always says in every letter, amen, I know thy works. He always gives a, a, man, a, a, a glimpse of his character, amen, to the church at, at Ephesus. <laughs> amen. He came because, amen, he was he that held the seven stars and, the, and walked in the midst of the seven candlesticks. <laughs> yeah, that was at Ephesus. The church at Sardis, amen, he was the one, amen, that said, I am the beginning and the last. The church at Pergamum, he says, I am, it was the one with the two-edged sword. And the church at Thyatira, you heard him say that I am he. <laughs> amen. I am he who has not only, amen, the, 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 the word, the tongue of fire, but I see with fire. And I also have feet of brass. That was at the church at Thyatira. 
my brothers and my sisters, but here at the church, a man of Sardis, he says to them, I am he, God Almighty. He says, I am he who have the seven spirits. And we know the Holy Ghost is in every church. But Jesus is saying here, amen, I am the one who has stationed him there in your midst. And I hold them in my hand. I know that, and since I know that they're there, since they're in my hand, I know your spiritual condition. Not only do I have, amen, the seven spirits, but I also have, of course, the seven stars. Amen. Your, I have your preachers, your bishops, your overseers, the man, the woman of God who's over your church. I have them in my hand as well. And he says to them, I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, <laughs> but you are dead. And I need to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, <laughs> amen, it's, 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 it's disastrous. It's critical. It's a tragedy to think that just because men say that you're doing well, Men say that your church is alive and growing. <laughs> and God says, amen, your name says you're alive. You've got a reputation among men that says you're alive. But I say, you're dead. He says the church at Sardis is a dead, dying church. It's a church who has works, but their works are empty because their works are void of spiritual power and influence. They have a church with a reputation only, but not a church with power. He says, I know that, that y'all got a name that said you are alive, but in fact, you are dead. And he says a little later on, amen, that helps us to understand that they're not completely dead. They have not completely died out because, amen, if they had died out, they couldn't wake up. And he tells them, I need you to wake up. <laughs> amen. That's what he says in verse number two, amen. The Good News Bible translation says, wake up. The King James says, be watchful. But, but the Good News Bible translation and several others says, wake up. Amen. And if you're dead, you can't wake up. <laughs> if you're dead, you can only be revived by resurrection. Amen. But he says to them, wake up. <laughs> and so they were dying. They were dead, dying church. Now, my brothers and my sisters, I, I want to talk with you because we've got to be careful. We, we have to be careful with earning a reputation in our city, where, wherever our church. We've got, we got to be careful. We've got to be very, very careful when, when, when men say, when the world says that church is alive. Uh, we got to be careful with that because people will think that you are alive by how they measure churches. <laughs> but God does not see us from the outward appearance. God sees us from the inside out. God measures us by what's in our hearts. You got to notice he says to the church at Ephesus, uh, you're lacking love. I want you to go back and get your first love. He says to the church at, at, at Smyrna, he says to them, hold on to what you have. I see your tribulation. I see your patience, your endurance. Don't give up. Hold out. Be faithful until the end. Keep on holding on. 
He says to the church at Pergamum who knew, amen, heresy, false prophecy, amen, and who knew spiritual immorality. He said unto them, amen, but I know your works. And I know how you're holding on to the, a man in your faith and your tolerance and your endurance. He says even to the church at Thyatira. Amen. I know your love, your service, and your faithfulness and your endurance. But to the church at Sardis, he doesn't see Anything worth noting, he says, I know your works. You got a reputation that says you are alive, but you're dead. We got to be careful because people will labor us alive by what they see. They'll see ministries for every interest level. Amen. Everyone, there's a ministry. Amen. If you want to, amen, to be a dog walker, there's a ministry in the, in certain churches for dog walkers. <laughs> amen. Amen. If you want to be a cat catcher, there's there's a ministry in in, in in some churches for those who are in love with cats and want to preserve them. There are some churches that are full of ministries. But the word of God is not being preached with authority in those churches. Be careful when men speak well because they may just be looking at you from the outside in and measuring you based upon their own taste and their own like. God measures the church by its spiritual power, by its connection with him. And he says to them, I want you to wake up. I want you to wake up and I want you to remember to restore that that you received and heard, or that that you heard and received. You heard, amen, the gospel of grace. You heard the gospel under salvation. You heard the justification by the righteousness that I have provided for you. That's what you heard at first. You heard, amen, me preached unto you. My word preached to you that let you know that you were a sinner. A wretch undone and accepted had been by my work on Calvary. Now there are churches that's preaching other kinds of doctrine. There's churches telling you, amen, that you're all right just as you are. You are all right to, just as you are to come to Jesus, but you must come to him believing, amen, that he has exactly what you need, that you are truly a sinner, a wretch undone. Without him, you are going to hell. Churches don't preach about hell too much no more. They'd rather re preach about peace and prosperity instead of preaching about salvation, the saving of lost souls. Remember, I want you to wake up and remember the root. I said, upon this rock, I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you're preaching anything else other than Christ Jesus, you're building an empty church, a spiritual people. Might be full of people, but the spirit is gone. Might be full of people, but they're weak and feeble. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ can nourish and fuel true ministry. 
Remember, therefore, what thou hast heard and received, wake up, revive that, that thou have received and heard, heard and received and repent. Turn from your desire to be entertained, from your desire, amen, to be a consumer, <laughs> amen, and one that will, amen, desire to be a servant in my kingdom. Repent, remember, and repent. Then he says this, but I know a few names. <laughs> Just a few, but I know a few names. There's a remnant that has, that has been faithful to me. They have not defiled themselves. They have held fast to the gospel, the good news of my salvation. They have not yielded themselves to be wrapped up in a reputation among men, but they rather have received my righteousness and they're walking with me right now in the purity of spirit. I, I'm still dwelling in the hearts. Just a few names. Just a few of them. God Almighty. And I thank God that although you may be, you could be in a dying church, there is always left just a few that can turn that church around. <laughs> Few folk that have not given up but still holding on. And he says, hey amen, I need you to continue to overcome. You see, it only takes a, a spark uh -huh, to get a fire going. Yeah, it only takes uh, two or three years uh, gathered together uh, in my name. He says, uh, for me to be uh, in your midst. And along and uh, Jesus uh, is in the midst. As long as uh, he's present, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, he can uh, turn uh, every church uh, around. Uh, yes, uh, he could make uh, a dying church uh, live uh, and vibrant again. Uh, yes, uh, and I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where you are in your walk with him. But you don't have to be in a group of people to have an empty faith. God wants your faith to connect with him, to trust in him, to waver not. There are some of us that we in our individual selves are on the just the edge of being lost. But God wants you not only to hear his word, but receive his word. And not only receive it, but to stand on it, be rooted, grounded in his word. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. I am thankful that we have a chance, no matter what your situation is, you have a chance to turn it around as long as you give yourself to Jesus. And if you don't know him today, today is a good day to let him come into your life. Today is a good day to surrender your life to him and to tell him, to ask him to come into your life. Today is a good day. To say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, a wretch undone. But I want to give my life to you today. I want you to come in. Because I know 
that the way I'm going, the path I'm on, the journey I'm on, is not going to take me where I want to go because what I want is for you to be in my life. Here I am, Lord. I open my heart to you. I confess my sin, but I open my heart to you. Come in to my life today. He'll do it. He'll do it right now. And he will turn your life around. He'll give you power over things in your life that you thought had you bound and imprisoned. He will break every chain and free you to be who he has destined you to be. God bless you and may he keep you this is my prayer. Sister Dunwoody is coming with the gospel, uh, with, the, with the news, amen, the good news, amen, our, our announcements. She's coming right now. Good morning. Welcome to GM 2799 for this week's Antioch News. This is the first Sunday in the month of August, and as we customarily do on first Sundays, we wish everyone celebrating a birthday this month. A very happy and joyous birthday, and may you be blessed with many, many more. As you can see, we are coming to you this morning for the first time in a couple of weeks from the sanctuary. And as you can see behind me, you can see the changes that are taking place right before your eyes. So by the time you return to service, you will see a brand new Antioch. Our family in bereavement is Brother Milo Mahomes and family over the passing of a sister, Sister Mabel Virginia Mahomes, who passed away on Tuesday, August 2nd. The service will be held at 12 noon on August 13th at the Church of the Palms, 1960 North Swindon Avenue, Delray Beach, Florida. Please pray for the family and all of our bereaved families as well as our sick and shut-ins. Kudos to Sister Stephanie Carrier Jones for sponsoring our back to school drive held on Saturday, July 30th, as well as all of those who worked to make it a huge success. All of you paid a part too that made generous contributions, so thank you for helping us out, and it was an overwhelming success. We had many kids present. If you have any concerns regarding your voting status, take care of it now so that when you go to the polls, you won't encounter problems that you can take care of right now. Early voting starts in Dade County, August 8th, and it lasts through August 21st, and Broward County, August 13th through August 21st. Election day is August 23rd, so get out and vote. This concludes this week's Antioch News from GM 2799 until next Sunday. Stay safe and be blessed. And that's all I got. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I am I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to be able to share this service with you. And I want you to be able to help us. Uh, amen. Continue to minister as you've seen. Amen. Uh, at the onset of this um, video today, our ministry to the youth in our community, help us to continue to be a blessing, amen, to this, to this community by helping us, amen, by giving forth, if you're a member of the church, certainly your tithes and your offering, and if you are just viewing this, amen, we certainly will accept, amen, any donation you would like to give, amen. You can send your gifts, amen, to the support of this ministry by simply sending them, mailing them in to Antioch Missionary Baptist Church of Brownsville, 2799 Northwest 46th Street. Or you can go online, amen. You can go to our website, www.ambcbmiami.org and click in the upper right-hand corner, the Give button, and you can give right there, amen, through our Givelify. Or you can go directly to Givelify, www.givelify.com, G-I-V-E, lify.com and give look up Antioch Missionary Baptist Church of Brownsville. We'll be glad to receive your gifts and amen. Certainly it would help us to continue to be a blessing in this community. 
Listen, I want you to get ready now just before we close. This is the first Sunday on the month. And this is our opportunity to share with you in our Lord's Supper, our Lord's uh, the communion service, amen, where we uh, do this based upon what the word teaches us to do, amen, that as often as we come together, we ought to plot a time to remember, amen, the awesome price that Jesus paid on Calvary for our sins. And so I want to encourage you, get your wine and amen and your cracker. If you don't have the pre-filled cups from the church, amen, now is a time to get, amen, your saltine cracker or, and, and your grape juice, <laughs> amen, as we prepare, amen, to go in communion together. There in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23 and several of those verses that follow is the scripture that helps us as we go into our communion service. It simply says, for I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink the, this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Amen, amen. God bless the reading of his word. The word says that on the night in which he was betrayed, amen, that he took bread. And after he had blessed it, he broke it, saying, This represents my body that shall be broken for you. Take, eat ye all of it. And in the same way, the Bible says that he took the cup, saying, This represents my blood that shall be shed for you. Take, drink ye all of it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'm praying for you this week. I'm praying that you have a great, glorious day. I'm praying, amen, that the Lord will bless you mightily this week. Know this, that I love you, but God, he loves you best. God bless you this week.